Hey everybody, I wanted to talk a little bit about the artist formerly known as Kanye West, who put on the MAGA hat and became Ye, and then took the hood off and became Yadolf. What I also want to talk to you about is something really challenging, which is not ignoring the first red flag and not waiting until the last straw. Now by this point, many people have already given up on Kanye or stopped caring about him, stopped listening to his music, and for a variety of reasons, I think... For people who don't have any connection to him, like he was just a celebrity piranha figure that was just everywhere. But for a number of people like myself as a hip hop fan, he was larger than life. It also hurts and it's also very familiar for a lot of us when it comes to having a loved one, a friend, someone you care about and watching them slowly become radicalized uh, as time goes by, especially these last few years. Now with a lot of these folks, there is a point of no return. And the fear is, and the hope is, that that person you care about, your friend, your loved one, the celebrity that you care about, has not passed that line and crossed the line of no return. Part of the reason we're captivated by and love these artists, actors, performers, musicians, creators, is charisma. And that's also what makes them so dangerous. Especially in the hands of men, charisma can become a dangerous weapon. I'm gonna show you a clip from an incredible documentary that came out years ago called OJ Made in America by ESPN as part of the 30 for 30 series. If you haven't seen it, I really encourage you to invest the time. It's a triptych that looks at the history of racial violence and racial tensions in Los Angeles, domestic violence, and the plague of fame and charisma and how it's affected our society. I'm gonna show you a clip here from the documentary. It was an interview seven years after OJ Simpson was acquitted from the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, an interview with Wendy Williams, and a great example of the dangerous power, the spellbinding power of charisma. At first, I just wanna say it's, it's um, interesting to have you here. Thank you. OJ, I was told not to ask you about the incident. Is there any reason why? What incident? The incident with Nicole. The, the, um... Because there's nothing to talk about. Okay. Because you were proven yeah. innocent and so Because I was time. innocent. Yeah. I was proven innocent. And once, you, once we open that, we back into the... Yeah. It's, yeah. what, seven years now? It's the it's over and over yeah. and over. You know I mean? They tell you, life goes on. So um, when, when you travel and when you're walking down the street and things like that, what type of reaction do you get from people. The exact reaction, maybe a little more emotional okay. than I, that I got 15 years ago. If you took a walk with me down the street, you'd be amazed. I don't care where I go, white, black, wherever I go, everybody's terrific. Not for more. nothing, good black don't crack, and you certainly do look good. <laughs> he sure does. Okay. Did I say that? Wait, I know. <laughs> I know. You're gonna catch yourself, right? <laughs> you know what? I don't know, OJ. I don't know. OJ, I want to say I don't like you, I can't stand you, I want to call you names, I want to throw you right out of here, but you know what? Your husband's watching, you better watch this. You've done it to me. Can I invite you to a party? Yeah, sure, I'll be there. OJ, damn you, I like you. Thank you. Damn you. Damn you. Damn you, OJ. Damn you, OJ Simpson. You're charming. Thank you. You know, in, in all aspects of life, in everyday life, we choose to draw a line when it comes to past stories of hurt and legacies of harm, when it comes to people that we admire in our lives, people we admire in the larger society. But it's like Maya Angelou famously said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. And whether it's Michael Jackson, Elvis, David Bowie, Prince, or Eminem, we look past creepy behavior, harmful lyrics, or stories of their treatment of women and girls because we are lost in the music. So of course, according to Ye, Kanye West is dead, and now it's Ye. But you can't separate Kanye West from Ye and you can also not pretend that the person Kanye West was is different than who Ye is now. You can't spell Kanye without the Ye. That person was always there. It's just that we chose to not see it because we cared and we wanted to believe. It feels like such a betrayal. How? This is the George Bush doesn't care about black people, Kanye. I know for me, I think about Kanye performing Blood on the Leaves on MTV, or I think about lyrics like my mama was raised in the era when clean water was only served to the fairest skin. I talk about 
the trust famine and how that's something that's really a big part of the issues we're seeing across society today. And this is a great example of it. We have so much trust in public figures, in people we admire, trusting others. And we're trusting ourselves to know the difference, to know who we can believe or not believe. So when we lose trust in these artists, we lose trust in others, and we even lose trust in ourselves and our ability to see through certain things and see problematic stuff. You know, I, I name myself in that too. I'm someone who loved his music and it was so important to me up until about 2016 or so. This is an artist who created and produced so many tracks and stepped out from behind the scenes and then started putting out his own music, stepping in front of the camera and putting out classic tracks and classic albums. His body of work is both a prolific catalog of incredible music and incredible misogyny and devaluing of women's bodies and lives. It is as much an endless list of classic tracks as it is a prolific list of red flags. You know, when he came onto the scene, it was the infamous story of him having had his jaw wired shut from a car accident. And shortly after that, when he opened his mouth, he found his voice and he wouldn't shut up. And more and more, he found the courage to say things out loud, being provocative, pushing buttons, but more and more saying the quiet parts out loud and moving into this idea of free thinking and free speech, which really means being free to say the quiet part out loud. Kanye's consistent misogyny in his music, the lyrics, the videos, was a red flag that many of us ignored. And again, like I said, we draw a line and we pick and choose certain things that we're going to accept and reject and try to navigate what things about the artists and the art they create that we embrace and reject. There are plenty of red flags when it came to Kanye. For example, his treatment of Taylor Swift, that red flag should have been enough. The song Famous is an example of the incredible soundscapes West creates, and also an example of the misogynistic snark that also makes it so hard to listen to his music sometimes. That red flag should have been enough. And of course, treatment of his wife Kim Kardashian back then, and even now, that red flag should have been enough. The point is if we took sexism, misogyny, hatred, and devaluation of women's bodies, voices, and lives more seriously across the world, we would pay more attention to these red flags. In her Substack newsletter, Weaponized, Caroline Orbueno wrote about the Colorado Springs shooter and tied it to, as she has in many of her pieces and in much of her work, how mass shooters have a history of domestic violence. Caroline talks about the shooter of the Colorado Springs LBGTQ2S nightclub just the latest in a long line of massacres carried out by a perpetrator with a history of domestic violence. Now, mass shootings, mass violence, domestic violence, that is at the end of the spectrum when it comes to disappointing, hurtful, and harmful behavior. We always think about the worst, but the reality is harm, hurt, disappointment looks like all kinds of things when it comes to sexual violence, violence against women, domestic violence, that can look like a whole array of things, and abusive behavior of any kind is problematic. There's so much going on every day, it's hard to keep track and keep up with things. And to be honest, yay, Kanye West is not the most important issue in people's everyday lives. But the uproar of Kanye's unabashed love for Hitler and Nazis kind of caught me from surprise because he already talked about this. In CNN in October of this year, there was an article where an executive talked about Kanye speaking about these things already. And the news also came out that his 2018 album, which came out months after he put on the MAGA hat and met with Donald Trump infamously at the White House, that album that he put out in June of that year called Yay, he wanted to call it Hitler. And the first song on that album should have been the red flag that was enough for everybody. He, the first song that album was called I Thought About Killing You. The most beautiful thoughts are always besides the darkest. Today I seriously thought about killing you. I contemplated premeditated murder and I think about killing myself and I love myself way more than I love you. So today I thought about killing you premeditated murder. You'd only care enough to kill somebody you love. The most beautiful thoughts are always inside the darkest. Now again, that album came out shortly after he put on the red MAGA hat. But the red flags by that point were everywhere. The thing about it, me and Adidas, it's like, 
I could literally say anti-Semitic shit and they can't drop me. I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Now what? I'm tired of hearing I'm a Nazi. I'm really sick, because I'm not. But I think by them falsely I, accusing I, people, some people are going to become Nazis. I, I, I am. I am. <coughs> now what? I am. Now You're what? what? So misogyny, hatred of women, sexism, those are the initial red flags when it comes to hurtful and harmful behavior. They're telltales when it comes to men who are in a downward spiral of violence and causing harm to people in a variety of ways. It starts with words, it starts with lyrics. The point here again is one of the hardest things, which is ignoring the red flags that pop up and not waiting until the last straw. And yes, we have to pick and choose when it comes to interacting with people, things that we're willing to accept, things that we think we can help someone grow and move past. And putting our faith in one another is important. Having trust in one another is important. When that trust is broken, it's hard to rebuild. And right now that's where we're at in society where people don't trust anyone. And clearly Kanye has crossed the line, a point of no return when it comes to his outspoken anti-Semitism, his embrace of white supremacy, male supremacy, harmful Christian fascist ideas and rhetoric, and aligning himself with white supremacists and Nazis. You know, a lot of us will say we didn't see this coming, but it was a slow incremental turn and the red flags were everywhere. We need to reach out more than ever to young men and men in our lives, in our communities, and help them before they reach the point of no return. How do we do it? Easier said than done, but it starts with recognizing those red flags. It might not be your work, but sometimes we can plant a seed and at least hopefully be someone where we open a door to someone and say, hey, I'm here for you. I care about you, but I'm not going to stand by and accept this behavior, these attitudes. It's not your direct role or job or responsibility all the time. But in your own way, hopefully you can be part of a melody, part of the music when it comes to helping young men and boys change their tune when it comes to hate.